the Nikki Glaser podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello, here I am. It's Nikki Glaser. This is Nikki Glaser podcast. Welcome to Thursday's episode. Um, we're doing something special today. We're gonna. Uh, we always go through our fan thrax, which is our um, fan mail. Um, that we call Fanthrax based on anthrax that was being sent to people in the mail back in uh, the early 2000s. Uh, don't know how we got there, but we got there. And um, I'm joined by Andrew, of course, and Noah. Um, Andrew is nine floors below me. Noah is nine states away from me <laughs> and uh, feeling pretty good. We already did one podcast today that this is actually being recorded on Wednesday because we are traveling to New Orleans today. And then Florida this weekend. I sound bummed about it, but I'm loving zero right now. Loving, loving, loving. Um, how are you feeling about it, Andrew? I feel good. I just hope that I'm in the clear. So I don't know. We'll see. You got clear. You have TSA pre and clear. That's true. But I don't know about <laughs> the cleared nostrils. We'll see. I mean, it's so funny because like I have this test here and I'm just waiting because I don't want to go too early and find out I still have COVID. So I'm like, Right, right, right. Well, so, if you have COVID, you could perform with a mask on. You could skip the meet and greet. Um, we could ask the front rows to put on mask. If you know, people can wear a mask if they feel scared. Um, it's a theater show. No one's getting close to me. I I feel pretty yeah. strongly that I'll be. And it says fifteen minutes. You have to be within six feet of someone, and you're only on stage for twelve. So, boom, we protect everyone. <laughs> I guess I'll go short just to save lives. <laughs> <laughs> my own yeah um <laughs> last week in, in houston was i it's gonna be hard to beat that club um it's called 713 and oh, yeah. it was so nice they they gave me a jacket with my name embroidered on it and then on the back it said eat a glaze in the moon kings which is my dad's band this guy Artie, shout out to Artie there who does all like the talent relations he got a cake for Andrew that we decorated and Andrew shoved his face in, which was hilarious. I'm sure you saw that on Instagram. Um, he got me a, uh, a a picture of Luigi. I mean, it was just like so above and beyond. It's so funny how those little things can make you, they make all the different, venues never do that stuff. And it's like, this guy had an idea. We're gonna do something different than most venues. You know, like that That just doesn't happen. And And I wrote my agent saying, you know, he, he wrote me and was like, it's so cool you're doing this going alone thing. He saw my post about if you go alone, I'll give you free meet and greet. He was like, that's so lovely. Yeah. And I go, and he was like, how was your weekend? Happy Easter. And I said, you know what? It was a great weekend all around. I, I got to say, uh, Austin, that theater, the Paramount was one of my favorite. Those two shows were two of my favorite shows of all time. But Houston, I was in the best mood because I scooted, on, I did rode a scooter on stage <laughs> because they had a scooter because the hallways were kind of long. So he brought us this little electric scooter um, and all of those gifts really make it stand out to me. And I said, you know what, Nick, my agent's name is Nick. I said, we are going back. I want to stay loyal to Houston because they put in the extra effort to make me feel really good. And I want to honor that. It's just, it was really nice. It's like when those guys at the casino gave the guitar and the, and the putter and it's yeah, just, I don't know. It's like, casino that was. I'm just kidding. It was, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was in it New was, York. Um, <laughs> I remember it was because it was something like I know it, Del Taco. Yeah, it sounded like Del Taco. It was Del oh. Del, Del Ga Ga Gato. <sighs> Fuck, sorry guys. Oh my guys. god, I'm we, so I sorry. I guess you got to send guys. us another putter. And a yeah, guitar. honestly, I could use an amp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was so nice too. I mean, these just you know little gifts, and it doesn't have to be that that much. I mean, I yeah. got a card from a bestie this weekend too that I haven't opened up yet because I'm just not ready for those kinds of feelings. I always get nervous on Fanthrax Day, I gotta say. I get nervous hearing voice memos, even though they're always nice and they make me in the best mood. Why is it we avoid things that make us feel good? What is going on here? Like, I feel good in the moment when I hear mm -hmm. them. I feel good. Like, I just don't, I just am, I, I guess, guess I'm scared hey, there's gonna be some sort of criticism laced within, even though I know Noah is very aware of weeding out any kind of, thing that might bum me we, out we never get those kinds of voicemail by the way i know everyone's so positive what am i, I think, scared of i just i think I what know. it is is one you might feel like you don't deserve the love so you don't want to mm. or at least that's what i go through sometimes like if i get mm. too much praise i'm like i don't deserve this and then uh then you're not going to react the right way 
They might not like, say I'm adorable. Too. Yeah, dainty and adorable and Oh my god, no one cracked me up the other day. You're, I think you're right actually, Andrew. It's it's a self-esteem issue because I'm scared they're going to say something that might I might take like they just might say something that makes me you know, people compliment all the time and I walk away from it being like it wasn't exactly what I wanted. It's just so stupid and it's all my own stuff, but it's it's both you know, it's this addict idea that you hear in 12 step a lot of um addicts tend to think they're the piece of shit at the center of the universe so it's like you think you're great but you're also like like it's the idea that like i can't watch myself do comedy but i can make people say that i'm top 10 in the world (laughs) yeah yeah, like what the fuck i don't know i have to post a thing today i got um a i'm gonna say what noah made me laugh about but because i I put a bookmark on that i killing me but I do have to post a reel on my, I got asked to do like a promotional thing on Instagram for this uh, like wireless company. And I, they sent the offer and I was like, I would do it for more. And I just don't want to do a static. I don't want to do a post. I'd write, I do stories all day, but no post. And if they can't do it, that like, I just am embarrassed to do posts. And they got the money up and I think it came back. They were like, we got you to, we got this, 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 but it, I, for, I thought that they probably eliminated the static post, but they didn't. And so now I'm like signed this contract that I have to post a thing. And I had to write this monologue the other day, memorize it, get lighting. And like, it was a lot of work. And I feel like sometimes you get paid so much for these things and you go, oh my God, my life is so easy. But I was like, no, I put in a fucking lot of work. So I got to post that later today. And I'm so embarrassed. I'm just going to post it and not look at the comments because I'm sure people are going to be like, look at Nikki like shilling herself out for whatever. I'm going to spend it on good things like um, uh, 14,000 eye masks. I ordered from Amazon. I'm not joking you. 16 eye masks, all different kinds. I should do a, a video of it. But Noah, you made me laugh the other day when, you know, whenever I send you files or like ad reads or whatever, I write like, thank you. And sometimes I like pile on the appreciation because I just know that I've sent you like a bunch of bullshit and you got to whittle it down to 60 seconds. And it's just like, (laughs) oh, this girl works so hard. And I just don't even see most of the work you do. And so I think I gave you like the compliment that we talked about, like that you really like. And then so you wrote back, you're like, thank you so much. I know you're like so busy and everything. And then you wrote another email going and say, and you are, and it was adorable. (laughs) You said something like that was so (laughs) cute. (laughs) And it did make me feel good. Even though I've asked for that compliment, I like it when I get it still. Chris said it yesterday when we were practicing throwing. He was like, by the way, you are so adorable. And I was like, yes, he doesn't even know that I (laughs) said that that was my number one. It's so nice when you get it. Um, yeah, so that was a nice moment. Um, anything else going on in your worlds today? Mm, no, just a boring fucking day, you know, mm. just a hang day. Brenna actually took off work, so we're just hanging. Oh, and, nice. Uh, does she does she have cocoa? She tested negative for cocoa, but she okay. has symptoms for cocoa. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's you know yeah. the the patient has now become the doctor. So now I'm. Um, it is interesting. You just like give it to each other back and forth. I guess yeah, that was so what hot. immunity does. It, it builds it up <laughs> so that you don't get it again right away because everyone you have, you know, um, that's cute. It's fun to take care of someone you love, especially that she just took care of you, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. She was like insanely nice to me. Like mm-hmm. yeah, it was uh, it's very special when someone I, I just a facial for some reason is like the nicest thing I think a woman can do for a guy if he's accepting something. It's just like yeah. seven steps of love. It's like Wait, so I have nice. a question for you. You know what I because mean? It's just like so touching and so like How do you I don't know. It's How it's does amazing. she do it with with your beard? Cuz I feel like that takes up half your face. You only have like yeah, this much it's skin. Yeah, the job. Off. Well, you could dig into the beard. You can get in there with with stuff. Like I think women think facial hair makes the face like completely uh like, There's still like a scalp underneath. Yeah, like, much yeah. Like, like sometimes yeah. she'll igno- like ignore the mustache. I'm like, you could st- get in there. That's where that's where the real fungus. Start. Like that's yeah, where the lots shit of, like, build up. <laughs> but yeah, I think women. You're not washing that out at all. That's probably is build up in there. Oh, that's where all the build. All guys build up well, goes yuck. inside their beard. Yeah, yeah. It's Ugh. disgusting. They fucking maggots. Live I don't in think there. Chris would let me do a facial on him. He would just be like, I got it. You don't need to do that. Like. <laughs> It Trust just, me, I'm like that too. Like I even love when massaging when, him, and he's just like, "No, I'm good." <laughs> when they're pressing the face, I like lean into it, and sometimes it mm-hmm. can be too cold. Like she was using that cold stick, 
I it's love like, giving massages. You just, yeah, it's, it's so much. It's the best. I love. So oh my god, best. we had that bestie who. If you're just joining the show, you're going to be freaked out by this. But I am into just like operating on people's warts. It's just like my dream. I want to do it. I know it's so disgusting. <laughs> but we had a bestie who I God love her so much. The Cozy Wall is her name on Instagram. <laughs> she is was in Vancouver and was like. I have one for you. It was, she sent me pictures of it. I was like so excited. And the, I see her at the meet and greet, but Andrew couldn't make it to those shows. And I couldn't be a weirdo bringing this girl, like without an accomplice to be like, Nikki's weird. This is her thing. Like I needed someone to be there to be like, to like kind of make fun of me, like a friend to vouch oh, to for me. Oh, to go and but cut off the war. Yeah. With like my, with my opener, John and his girlfriend, they would have been like, what are you doing? But this girl was like, you can do it. And I was like, girl, I thought about ordering scalpels. I was going to take scalpels with me, but I decided like, I can't do this because it's, you know what it felt like? I told her it felt like exactly like being on the road and being offered, you get to cheat on, on the hottest girl in the whole, like you're number one. And you go, I just... I want to so bad. Like, I, it's, it's all I've been thinking about. I've been, like, dreaming about, like, I have this opportunity to, like, d this is, like, my dream. I'm wanting to get warts just so I can, it's, like, all I do at night is watch videos of these things. Like, I'm a weirdo, but it's just so, it's the number one satisfying thing to me in the world. And I just couldn't do it because it's too weird. And I felt the same way men must feel when they're, like, it just be wrong to do, even though I, I want to. Mm -hmm. It's thank you for offering I just can't, but I'm going to be thinking about this so much. And I really relate. I mean, I don't want to say that's how men feel when they get offered pussy, but I'm guessing <laughs> it is. There is a part of men that it's uh, and women, too, where it's hard to turn down a thing that you may have like been dreaming about, but you just can't because it's going to it's going to make you look too bad. Sometimes it's gonna you, get be a, bad. you get a two for one. She said she was going to sign a document that said even if I like hurt her, she wouldn't be able to sue. And I'm like, can we get that notarized in Canada? Like, I just, I also am scared of doing something wrong with it. But get God in there too then deep. She yeah. goes, what about if you just tell me what to do to it and then I'll film it? And I was like, are you, you are the best. Like, the fact that I found someone who like is coming up with a way for me to like, I've thought about paying people on Reddit to do that to the things that they post on there. Like, I thought about being like, can I pay you? It's so weird. But I just can't Maybe help you could it. do something where like it's, like you could do like some kind of VR thing where like you could put on, I don't know, I'm sure there's some kind of virtual reality where you can. I mean. Where you could put on goggles be and be your her hands. Well, there's these things. So you know what I saw so on jealous. on TikTok? So many people are into pimple popping and Ugh, all this yeah, shit. I know. So there's these, like, they make, like, skin things that you get to I pop. I know that people can pick and so pop. So I think I there know. might be maybe a wart thing that you can perform surgery no, on. There's I'm only sure like there is. two or three of us. Most people in the warts subreddit are just there to, like, treat their warts and talk about, like, how much they suck. And then there's others like us that are like, film it. There's but like I bet three you, of let's us. Let's do a Google search, though, because there's plenty of doctors that Are do. Are you kidding me? I've done, I know okay, everything. Okay, so then why is there no, like, cadaver wart thing that you could cut on and practice cutting? Be because you have to be skilled to operate on the human body. They're not just going to give a random girl who has a podcast a cadaver to fucking slice up. No, not like up. a real cadaver, like a, a fake. Oh, like, like a uh, fake, because people would have to design, the, the need would have to be more than, oh, you know, like, practice ones for, yeah. for got hmm. Oh god! Maybe I there's some dildos so that come with general. But here's words another thing: I like the off. blood supply. I like when it starts bleeding. That means I know I got to it. Like it needs yeah. all of the things of being in a human body. Okay, we got <laughs> we gotta get the fan threat. This is disgusting. You need the tears. Okay. Yeah, let's uh let's take a quick break and we'll come back with fan threats. Andrew, I'm coming over here. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> we are not talking about what we were talking about before. We are moving on to Fanthrax. It is an all Fanthrax episode. This is a abridged episode, but we're going to get to it. Noah, what's our first fan? Oh, let's do the theme song. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the theme song. We'd be too. remiss. Here we go. Fan <laughs> all right. I wasn't frozen. I thought you were frozen. I know. That's you just I am held frozen it, man. Inside. You're fucking metal as fuck. I'm fucking hell, <laughs> Hellraiser. Fucking All right, our first voicemail. Fucking... Hellraiser is from Nikki. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, oh. It's Nikki. And I wanted to share an embarrassing kind of confession that I feel like is sort of similar to Nikki not wanting to share 
her favorite ordinary serum with us because then <laughs> like she's scared it'll run out and like there won't be any left for her. Um, but it's about Nikki's show coming out on E! May 1st. Welcome home, Nikki Glazer. Um, <laughs> yes. Obviously, I'm super stoked to watch and I will definitely tune in. I feel but this. I'm also I know where kind this of, is going. Like, nervous and like upset about it because i'm like oh no now all these people who aren't besties are gonna watch and yes. there's gonna be like so many more people into nikki glazer and it's like less nikki for me yes which of course yes. um is absurd and saying it out loud is even more ridiculous for me now but um i wonder if other besties feel the same way too that like now it's gonna be less mm -hmm. nikki for everyone else either way We'll support. Love you guys. Mm. Oh my God. I relate to this so much. <laughs> As a Swifty, I really had to give this up because I share her with the most amount of fans. But I really, uh, I really relate to this. And let me just tell you from the person that you're worried about, like losing out on um, the fan. I, I don't necessarily think it'll translate to as many more podcast listeners as you think. And if it does, that's great. But the podcast listeners will always be more special than any other of my fans from any other thing I do. So you'll always have that. And you can always say like, you're my bestie. And you can say I was here from the start. And, um, and I will never... Uh, yeah, I just, but I, but I completely understand that feeling. It is flattering that you have it for me, but there is enough of me to go around and I promise I won't change. I will do everything I can to not change and be like different if I get more famous or more fans or any of that stuff that I always fear about when I love um, certain people, even my friends who have become famous. I've been like, oh, I have to share them with their fans, you know, things like that. So um, I... She also, yeah, uh, I work very hard to not let, uh, you know, forget the, like, the people uh, that liked me first. She uh, compared you to like a fifteen dollars serum, so I want to get. I will two. take it. That serum has changed my <laughs> life. Great, and that it's really seven dollars. But her I know. Voice also I, I thought was it was so seven. Good. I really did think it was seven, and I put it to fifteen Maybe to she make you two. feel better. <laughs> oh my god, her voice is so soothing too. Oh, it's very like. Um, I like her name. Red Shoe Diaries. I don't know if you remember that on Cinema. Is it Red Table Talk? No, I don't know Red Shoe Diaries. It was very that was like, like, sexual. Yeah, yeah, that was like whatever. It was on HBO, right? All jerked off to as a mm, kid. Mm. Cinemax. Cinemax. Oh, yeah. it started with a girl yeah. like reading a story. David Duchovny was in a lot of them. Oh yeah, he's a sex addict. Yeah, you know he came out as one. Well, he's Probably a that actor. Yeah. And his voice is very sexy. It's like Californication. This. I wanted to be him so bad. The girl in all um, black and stuff. What's that? Really? For when yeah. you watch Californication, uh, that was your was, first. He was guy like my hero. Like, like I think he's the really? one that like made me feel like I wanted to be whatever an artist or whatever like a cool. I never artist saw that guy. show, but I know people loved it. The first what, scene, what about what was he? Yeah, he was a, a, de a fucking complete degenerate asshole who fucking like he had a wife and a daughter that he and I don't know he just fucked everything and he was and you were like, like that's what I want to. Well, he was like a real artist. He wasn't like cheesy. Like he was like fighting the urge to write books. Like he didn't want to do it, but he was so good at it. Kind of thing. Mm. I don't know. And he was he was funny. He was a piece of shit in the. In that the, wasn't like when you were seventeen, though. This came out when you were like thirty-seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very big inspiration. <laughs> no, it probably came out when I was no. It came out yeah, when I was probably thirty-two. Probably, no, 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 twenty-seven or twenty. Ninety-two 20. to ninety-seven. Californication? No. no. Oh, that's Red oh, Shoe oh Diaries. sorry. I'm still on Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> no, Californication. If I had to guess, finishing. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess t two thousand. Uh, what's 14, I'm 15 guessing years 2011. Ago. 15 years. No, 2008. I'm guessing 2011. 2007 to Boom. 2014. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Because I was still doing real estate when I was reading. So that show was on forever. Jesus Christ. The first um, the first episode was great. He was maybe I got to get into that show. I got so many old shows that I got to go back to. But we got to keep going with Fanthrax. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. All right. So on the Six topic, under. on the topic we were just talking <laughs> about. All right. Here's a voicemail from hey, Kate. Hey, Nikki, Andrew, and Noah. This is Kate from Baltimore. Um, I have a mispronunciation for you guys. Yes. So I am 30 years old, and until last year, 
I always thought that the Heimlich maneuver was called the Heimlich remover because you're removing what they're joking on. Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, it was slightly very humbling when I figured out that I was very wrong. Um, And I just have to say, I work in the medical field, which I know is a little (laughs) alarming, but Nikki, I work in dermatology (laughs) and um, anytime we treat a wart, which is like multiple times a day, I think of you and I just like, think of how much you would enjoy it if you were sitting there watching what oh i was seeing oh my god i would so, fucking love it love you guys love the pod um hmm. and jack's my boyfriend's name <laughs> oh that's a good one um yeah that oh. mispronunciation is great i don't begrudge her not knowing that it, it would make more sense calling it the heimlich remover i wonder if there's a dermatologist in st louis that can let you shadow maybe a little shadow program for you for old nick maybe we could figure that out I don't know with HIPAA, I ju- but is HIPAA, I just feel like, HIPAA? yeah, well, th- there are a lot of dermatologists on YouTube who film these things for creeps like me and their patients are totally fine with it because they sign a consent form being like your foot can be on it and their face isn't in it. You know, sometimes their voices because the doctor's like talking to them while it happens. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it, though. I'd have to get like actual training. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd have to have someone like that girl like let just me put sign put glasses a on and a, ro- and a coat. I'm just, I need to get some planner's warts. I have a suggestion. Okay, what? Next time you do the family constellation, bring up the wart topic. Yeah, why is this so um, a thing I'm into? So much. Maybe someone in your family? It's a hill you can't climb. Yeah, maybe. Little hill. I mean, a when I was, like, I hill. remember being a little girl. My sister had planners warts because little, little. Um, no, it's flat. Planners warts are fat, flat. They're not ever. Um, oh, just want to make sure you know. Um, I Because at the know bottom, and they push in and they go deep. But um, my sister had them when she was a little kid, and I remember she got in. Like we were climbing in my cousin's attic, and there was a nail sticking out, and it like hit one of them, and I was just like, oh, and it like was bleeding, and I was like wanted more. And I remember that was the first time. I, it was probably I was probably seven, and I was so into it. So it's it was a thing that started young. It's probably deep in my DNA. Who knows? Wow. Next Fanthrax. There okay, it is. Next I one. I think we just uncovered everything. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't explain it. Most people would just be like, "Ew, it's your sister's foot bleeding." Why no, do you want more? that explains everything, man. <laughs> that's it. That's everything, dude. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here's uh, Catherine from Canada. Ah, uh, CC. Hey, hey, it is Catherine from Canada, <laughs> hey. a.k.a. Ooh. Nikki's favorite name, a.k.a. The Cozy Wall. Uh, I got to meet hey. her the other day in what Vancouver. If you have a chance mm. to see her on tour, do it. Oh, my goodness. It was so amazing. And being a bestie, you will understand so much more than anybody else in the room. Lots of really Aww. great tidbits in there. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to apologize, actually, on behalf of all Canadians for our customs officers. Oh, my um, God. Any experience that I've ever had coming back into Canada has been brutal. They are the biggest dicks, even to their own citizens. They make mm. me feel like I'm doing something wrong and that I'm a criminal every time. So I just wanted to say that it's not just you. It is everybody. I actually adopted a puppy a few months ago. A rescue puppy came up from Texas for me, and I had to cross the border to go get it and bring it back in and on the way back they searched my car three times grilled me for 45 minutes took my sleeping toddler out of the car to search her car seat and the dog's crate they thought i was smuggling drugs (laughs) in (laughs) so i just wanted to say it's it's not you it's everybody and it really sucks i know they're just trying to keep us safe but it's a little bit overboard there canada anyway Love you guys. Don't be cut. And j- 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 Jack and Rose. He could have fit on that door. Oh, he could have. Uh, oh, my God. I lo- that was the girl with the wart, good... guys. That's the cool girl with the wart, Catherine. What? Um, yeah, that's Cozy Wall. That's fucking Cozy Wall. Yeah, that was she really weird. She didn't even mention her wart, but that's the one. So she, um, she's awesome. And yes, that is in Vancouver. I got so many, not only from Catherine. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Very validating that it's like, I thought she were going to be like, they were nice to me. Um, so nice to hear that it's not just me. I got so many messages about Air Canada being dicks and about the Border Patrol Canada, Canada being dicks. So it's not just me. It is a thing. And it felt so good. And there was apparently a guy who sued some French Canadian because, you know, 
Quebec is the only place that there's like a lot of French speaking Canadians. I think I could be wrong, but it's mainly yeah Quebec. Yeah, but they make Air Canada do French every single announcement. So you know the announcements on planes. They take twice as long because they have to do French too. But we're in Vancouver. There's it would be better to do Chinese. There's yeah. not as like there's many Chinese people in Vancouver. Not as many French. I could be wrong about that, but um, I got told that there was a man, one of these French Canadians, who sued Air Canada, or uh, because he did, they didn't do the announcements in French, and he like did this big lawsuit and was just a dick about it. And there is this like battle in Canada of like, God, we now we have to like honor the French, even though it's just one little part of our thing. It's a very interesting. I also dynamic. think like it's funny when hey, like Canada. these these people at the border, because you know they can. You know, they get in trouble for, uh, what's it called, when, you know, you're picking someone out because based off their look. Profiling. Yeah, they're profiling. So, like, yeah. in this instance, they're like, they they're like for one out of every 10 of those, they have to stop, like, a baby and a puppy and check its asshole for, like, cocaine just so they can yes. then profile 10 other people. For, you yeah. know, it's like, no, but we stopped this this woman with a, you know, a baby rescue German chef. You know what I mean? It's just like, yes, they do it to make up for the like being a complete asshole to 50 other people. It's you know, unfortunately, it's, like, it's unfortunate that like most of the time profiling in those circumstances work like people like. But, you know, they also know that ISIS or whoever is capable of. Hiding um, and radicalizing and young dog. girls with a <laughs> child in a wart that a comedian wants to get at. Yeah, they check the know? wart for another so adopted dog. Yeah, and it must. I mean, I'm not someone who gets profiled, so it must f- fucking suck. That yes. to, yeah, it's like the that's you know. I'm it's surprised I don't get profiled worst. more. I think I have like a I could pass for Middle Eastern. Pre or having pre check helps because you go through an intense one and they kind of let you go. They don't go as crazy. But That's true. yeah, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't even know what it's like, but it, yeah, it sucks. Even when like you see your bag go through the thing and then the bag waits and it's either going to go to the left or right when it decides like, I oh, hate yeah. when they have to search my bag and it's always just some fucking Zevia that I snuck in there from the green room and <laughs> forgot to take out. And I go, and the guy goes, what is this? And I go, it's really delicious. I know you guys like can't eat this stuff because it could be a bomb, but like you would like it a lot. And it's like three ninety nine for a can sometimes. All right, let's get to the next uh, bad bag. Yeah. Okay, here's a, a quick story from Andrea. Andrea. Hi, no jerky. Um, I wanted Hi. to share with you guys a really cringeworthy Zoom blender that I had. Um, nice. I was graduating with my PhD over Zoom alone in my apartment, which was <laughs> really sad. Um, but I had figured out how to get my family on one computer Zoom, which was facing me, and the graduation Zoom, which was on a screen behind me. So when it came time to open the Zoom with like the faculty and the other grads in my department, I didn't realize that it didn't automatically mute me. I was all nervous and emotional, so I didn't check. Anyways, I joined that room and then turned to my family Zoom to tell them in Spanish that all those faculty members that they could see hated each other and look how miserable they all are. This is how they've always been. It's such an awful place. The people are awful, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, I turned around and realized I was not muted and just about died. Um, Wait, did they speak Spanish? Thankfully, I don't think anyone that speaks Spanish was on the call. (laughs) And by that point, they really couldn't do anything except give me my degree. Um, So I was okay. Yeah. It was mortifying. And I hope I never have to see any of those people again in my life. Anyways, I just wanted to share my cringy Zoom moment. Um, You guys are awesome. Thanks. I bet they could just tell from the, her tone, though. She's oh, mocking yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, it's like... You know? And there's some kind of, like, sometimes you do Spanglish. And it's probably, like, that red shirt cunt. <laughs> you know, and like... they the, say her know. name, like, perfectly yeah. in English. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh... uh left square. Ro- Rosa de Bla- Blasa, uh, Nicole's a whore. Uh. Yes. Oh my God. But thank God for being bilingual because that would have been horrifying had they understood completely. That's why yeah. you, you gotta spit the geek to the good, but the girl with the gish. There's gotta be nothing the better though than when you get that graduation paper and you can finally be completely honest with your professor, even though nobody really talks yeah. shit to their face. But 
just that feeling that you that you have no more connection with them that you have, God, you don't have to the kiss best ass. Day. Oh. Ugh. Did you when you graduated college? Down, they still haven't caught me. What you graduated college, right? You got the diploma. Yes, I did still you, have dreams that I don't, but didn't. But yes, I did. Me too. All the time. I'm not even time. kidding. I'm not kidding. It's as if I live in a world where I think more about not graduating in my dreams than I do about graduating in my real life. So it's as if I haven't graduated. I'm haunted by them c- continually. You know, I called Tulane University and I go, hey, can I get my diploma? Because I don't believe I got one. Like, I, I I don't believe that because I lost it. And like, I just don't yeah. believe that I because I, I, I didn't cheat on walk, everything. So I never got mine. Yeah, I didn't walk either. I walked at a fake. <laughs> I told you this. I walked uh, two months before when I didn't have enough credits. I didn't. They gave me an empty diploma. I walked. My oh parents my God, were there. Got... I had no diploma in there, so Jesus I just had nothing Christ. in there. Everyone's like, "Why the fuck was did it a you blank walk? sheet? It was just a blank sheet." But they rolled even... up a blank like the, it was like a napkin with no, silverware in it. It was, it was like, like a table was, setting. It was like the <laughs> uh, like a, a binder kind of little thing with okay. nothing in it. Oh, I think they give you a scroll, right? No, I think they Isn't gave that me a usually binder. what it is? But all I know Isn't is... not an I, owl in a fucking hat give you a scroll? I don't remember. Yeah, I think you're Ellen in a was our speech robe. person, actually. But anyhow... Really? Uh, Ellen gave your speech? Yeah, God, I she's from she New Orleans. For that. I bet she made $70,000 on that appearance. Yeah, I don't remember. I was so hungover and like shaking and crying in the back. Oh my God, up. you can't even remember if she danced <laughs> and said, be kind. <laughs> Fuck dude and then you yeah so i called so him and i got the diploma and i was like okay i guess it really did happen but i still i still have dreams that i never graduated yeah yeah it's weird i, I Wait, think what, a lot those are very common what did you major in english because so i was then, already fluent and i had ap credit and i just wanted to do comedy and i just was like i'll pick the easiest thing and it turns out it was not easy it was english literature it was like hard yeah you had I mean, to read the whole book i just had to read stuff but i never read a single thing so what I did do you kind do of go online Spark notes, and yeah. I would just you know find excerpts to support these loose <laughs> arguments that I would make. Um, but I did well. It was just a very it was a it was an education in bullshitting, you same, know, phoning same, it in, same, you know. Um, but I did use that degree because I was a teacher at one point. So that's when I know I got a degree because I had to present that to um, when I was <laughs> a teaching at that Korean prep school. So it did pay off for that one semester of teaching. But other than that. Never have used it. Never have Dude, used so it. many jobs, if you just said you went to like, not the best school, but you graduated, I really think they would never check. Like, I think so now in the digital age they do, but back in the 90s, nah, they didn't check that shit. Let's take a quick break and come back with more Fanthrax. All right, we're back. What's the, we're like plowing through these. These are fun. More. More. Okay. More. Uh, next voicemail is from Sophia. Hi, Nikki, Andrew, and Noah. This is Sophia Bestie from Oregon. I'm just calling with a mispronunciation story that was on The Bachelor months ago, and I haven't been able to get it out of my head. <laughs> oh, wait, but one of the contestants of. in the Tell All said, hearsay, she say. Ooh, <laughs> like boy. implying that it was that it's gendered like he say or she say and i thought it was hilarious <laughs> that is such a good and one can't get out of my head whenever i think of saying you it say she hear said. her saying and want to say it By the like seashore. that to give it two different options hope you all enjoy jackpot jackpot <laughs> i love that because it is so it's just taking two common phrases and putting them together very fun like yeah. he, that's hearsay and it's also, oh, hearsay, she say. I thought at first He's, she was doing like her, like her say, she say. Oh, like right. Two different hers. It's really, See yeah, it's saying? he said, she said. It's not he say, she say either, too. Can so we, it's can, funny that. Does it, does it really grind your gears? One, hearing grind your gears. Uh, I don't when mind When someone that. says, uh, that's, what, that's what she said. No, that, I just go, huh? It's just, it's like, it's I nice. People can it just, make a little joke. Uh, what about so well. it bothers you i don't know it's just so hacky well it's interesting and... because it's people get it from o- the office generally yeah michael scott saying it all the time and michael scott was not funny and so it was a joke made by someone who is classically not a funny person and really <laughs> dorky so when people do it they're um, paying homage to if they're trying to actually be funny it's 
it's a weird thing because you're actually imitating someone who's cl- like was the caricature of someone who wasn't funny. But um, I don't know. Sometimes it's it's good. Sometimes you catch one that's like really good where you're like, oh, that would be funny if someone said that in a sexual way. And I think it's an easy way to, you know, we do that all the time with sexual stuff. We'll be like, um, and that's, you know, I'll be like, oh, my porn viewing is a slippery slope and so is my pussy. It's the same thing as that's what she said. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it's the easiest way to make that very similar joke. And you and I dabble in that all the time. I guess I mean, we, we, do we dabble. could go forever. Like, like dabble. Well, take it. You know, first of all, you know, I'm not a, a, a comedy snob. I think I'm almost opposite highbrow. But I don't know. I just feel like sometimes it's way too forced and it's said a lot. There was a time where it was said a lot. That's what she said. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, it's like dad jokes. It's it's comedy for people who are just trying to be, f- trying to be funny and don't really know how to be. That's what it was hearsay, funny. Um, hearsay. Said. Chris just recently asked me. It was so cute. He was like, "Hey, will you?" Because sometimes I write him. I'm like, "Hey, I want some roast jokes." Like sometimes I make appearances on things and they just want me to roast the people on them. And so I'll just write, uh, you know, Andrew, Emil, Chris, Tim, his brother, a bunch of like you know all my friends that I know are just probably available if they can they're great at writing quick jokes and chris is really funny and i write him like hey just roast jokes based on these and he asked me the other day he was like i want to be there for you in those moments and sometimes i'm like not free but like i know like how i obviously understand jokes he was like i want to like learn how to write roast jokes like i want to be good for you in that way and it was really sweet because i was like oh i would actually love to teach you like it would be fun to give a class on how you take this little germ of an idea and turn it into an actual joke and what that process is. Um, I just love that. And it's kind of similar to how he te- taught me how to like throw and stuff. Like it's just, oh, like he, it's fun to teach things. And it teaches you like, it teaches you something. I don't know. I've like never taught comedy before, but I guess there is an art to it. Um, yeah. But it I was mean, cute for him to ask. We both took classes. I mean, you know, a lot of people, they always go, how should I get into stand up? Take a class. It's okay. It's not. Yeah. It's you don't yes. have to be too cool to take a class. Just learn joke structure. And I always tell them yeah. start start with the most embarrassing story about yourself and work out from there. I think that's, oh, that's a good, good that's a good place to I start. I always say don't ever try to write from your perspective. Just write for someone else. And that's better advice for someone like me who I like a homework assignment and I do better at other people's homework than my own. And I mm. also had no idea what to say. So I was like just write jokes that you would submit to J- Sarah Silverman to say, and then just ah. be that, and then just say that. So it was very much helpful for me to not be like, what do I care about? Because I didn't know what I fucking cared about or what I had to say. Like, write it for someone else. So that was my tip. But I, I like yours, too. I'm trying to think of my most embarrassing story, though. Wetting the bed, you know? That was probably it. And I still don't know how to really make that funny. I've tried. I'm too I mean... close to it. I haven't gotten over it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sheets are still. You've wet never said that on heart. stage. You've never talked about wetting the bed on stage. What mm-hmm. about? I mean, that story is hilarious. At school, when the girl fucking yeah, rats yeah. You out. I mean, I've told the story, but I've never made it into like stand up. Now, I should. Uh, I mean, it's already there. You know what I mean? I think a lot of these yes. stories, they're already. It's just. It's already. You fun. just got to tell them. You just got to tell them without. It doesn't need the biggest twist. It's already fucking hilarious. Yeah. You know? No, I that'll feel- that'll come out in its own way someday for sure. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's st- it's what, like the reason I do everything. I think um, that in the uh, war. All right, let's get to yeah in wars. I do everything for wars. Um, <laughs> let's get to the next Fanthrax. All right, this one comes from a listener named Innocence. Hi, Nikki, Noah, Andrew, Besties. I know. My Innocence. name is Innocence, and I find myself with a new anxiety. I worry that people are going to think I'm k because I do certain things. For example. I never repeat an outfit. I might repeat a garment, but never an entire outfit. And once I've worn a garment too many times to repeat it, I will turn it into a completely different garment so I can add it back to the rotation. But I don't actually think this makes me cool. I just have ridiculous obsessive compulsive disorder. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I don't present the world with an entirely new outfit every single day that the sun won't come up tomorrow and i'm wondering if you think you would be able to tell the difference between 
and mental illness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> love everything you do. You've been my like one of my favorite comics since I was a child, and I Aww. appreciate you oh so very much. Oh. Thank you, and Jack Wagon is what I'm going to feel like as soon as I hit the stop button, probably. Uh, <laughs> I've never even heard of a Jack Wagon. I like that. No, Innocence, um, obviously, that does not uh, fall under K, but I'm glad that you asked. Um, I'm glad that you're keeping the sun coming out every day by changing your outfit. I think it's a, you know, we all have our things. I have to knock on wood when I say something like, I've never done that. Like, I always have to knock on wood. Um, that sounds like a fun one where you can't repeat an outfit. I used to pray to God and I'd always have to be in a different position when I prayed or else it wouldn't come true. Um, yeah, these little obsessive compulsions. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that if you were like, I can't repeat an outfit because then people won't think that I'm rich and have lots of clothes. Like that would be a different thing. But, um, no, uh, mental illness is never k. I don't think, even though it may present itself as k. Yeah, it sounds like... I mean, it's got to be expensive to not be able to wear the same outfit. I mean, can he wear the same outfit maybe a week no, he later? Needs, he, he won't wear like shoes and the same jeans and the same socks and the same. Like he's gonna he's gonna mix constantly and match. switch it, it up. It also sounded like he recreates the garment, like he uh, repurposes changes it. it. Yeah, right. I would like to see some That's examples, cool. innocence, yeah. of of these outfits. I think um, I'm kind of inspired. I, I think that I don't really repeat outfits either ever intentionally. I'm never like, this is great. This shoes and this shirt and this. I think I might be good about it. I might think I already did this. I can't do it again. What will people think? Um, I know. Part of me wants uh, one of the weekends coming up. I want. Is there a rent to runway for guys? No. Oh. I was thinking Sorry, that man. like I want to start wearing like really loud outfits on stage just as just as like almost like to like test me because i always wear like the polo fucking stupid you know jacket with jeans like and like mm-hmm. i never i've and or a black sweater like it's it's so hard for me to you want to dress of, up i don't want to like get crazy but something that like where like my problem is every time we take a photo of us on or of myself on stage like you every single show you have this new outfit that you could post and it's like, boom, like it's just like flashy and awesome and cool yes. as shit. And then I just look like, you know, an old fucking wet towel every single time. That is the, that's the curse and beauty of being a woman is that you get to yeah. change up your look a lot more than men get to. Um, I would maybe implore besties to maybe loan you a loud jacket or something when we go to cities. <laughs> that way you can like just literally rent it from them. You know, so maybe funny. set up some kind of On like a they drop it off at our hotel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. You want to wear louder things in general just to mix up the pictures. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's yeah. Just there's like, nothing more boring than pictures of men doing stand up. Like, how did Eddie Murphy? It's so boring. How did Eddie? <laughs> no offense. I Women, know. There's, it's compelling because we're beautiful. We can do makeup. We can do hair. We can yeah. do all these things. Men, it's always just a t shirt, just like. And a with cool a micro- jacket. It's so boring. And when you're singing, you could make like a cool face. I mean, you made some cool faces in some of the photos this weekend. I think maybe it might be about that, like doing funny things and getting more action shots. Now, what about. Because a lot Mur- of photos Eddie I Murphy, post are though, funny faces. At 21, wore an all red leather yes. outfit on. Like, what gave him the balls but he thought and that the looked cool. Yeah. He wasn't doing it for laughs. You know what I'm saying? No, I he know. Just... But even if he thought it looked cool. <laughs> well, I look mean... at Machine Gun Kelly. Look at what he wears. Look at what anyone. You, you could do anything, Andrew. That, no, I you know. You would just need to incorporate that style throughout your wardrobe. Like, you... Should I start wearing an all red leather outfit? I mean... Maybe well, just that's take going chances to... more. I think um, you love fashion. Yeah, you should borrow. Be, you also like funny. fruit roll-up suit. <coughs> My fruit roll-up suit. <laughs> yeah, that red uh, jumpsuit oh, you yes. had. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I just we think it'd be funny. I was thinking that Harry it. Styles thing that you were posting, and he's oh rocking God, he's like so a disco hard. ball on his body. I mean, yes. I was I, my body would look insane in that same outfit i mean he has the body he's where he can so wear fucking hot what is it about him what? That... yeah he's oh, because he's God. masculine he's like he's bowie free. he's masculine wow yes. feminine and just he just can he's just he's free that's good no he's just confident yes. he yeah. looks re- like he's wearing something that i didn't even think about what he was wearing i'm not even kidding you that the, like i it's now coming up in my head but it didn't even occur to me when i was looking at those clips that he was in this like sequence th- like yeah I, that 
it was just his his body, his face, his like his movements. It was just so erotic. God, fuck. Did you see Olivia Shania Wilde Twain like lady. touches like yes his body and he? Was oh, I didn't like, see that. Oh yeah. I mean, it was. I lo- it was she it looked was a cool amazing moment. too. Oh, yeah, um, all right, let's get to the last fan thrax, and then we're going right. to say goodbye for the weekend. Good. This, this is a good one to end with. Uh, here's Great. a message from Katie. Katie. Hi, Nikki, Andrew, and Noah. Um, I'm listening to Pod 198 right now, record of the year. Um, and I am listening to the part where you guys are asking, like, what you know, retail employees actually like tending to customers. And of course I can't speak for everyone, but I mean, speaking for myself, when I worked in retail, I actually quite liked when a customer wanted to interact with me and wanted Mm. to be like friendly and personable because I'm a friendly and personable person. And I was actually told quite often to stop talking with my coworkers because I was distracting them and myself. So I was just kind of stuck being by myself all day, Mm -hmm. just folding clothes. And so if a customer didn't interact with me, I didn't have anyone to talk to. I was Mm -hmm. pretty much just like bothering people like, Hey, how's your day? And they were like, fine. And just walked away. So, I mean, personally, I really liked talking with customers who wanted to talk with me. I liked being able to actually help them and be like, Oh, there's actually something I'm contributing other than just folding clothes, you know? Yes. I don't know. I just wanted to share that. Um, and also talk in my ASMR voice. I could, um, love you guys. And (laughs) Jack, (laughs) get, (laughs) perfect for someone that works in the, Great, great, great to know. I mean, I um, I like that because I, I feel hate, that way I, sometimes too. Where I'm really chatty and I get bummed out when someone doesn't want to chat with me, mm-hmm. and I just feel like I, I'm trying to connect. And um, what an annoying boss! Whoever that boss was that told her to like no. calm it down. I fucking hate that shit because you go into these places and they're like they don't even want you in there. No one's talking to each other. You feel like you entered someone's house. Like and you're like oh my god and, you're so right that's really you know, funny that's a bit <laughs> when you go into a store and you're like am I did I wander into the like am I in a living room house yeah yeah of like a frat house that no one wants to talk to me I don't know uh, yeah that's how it feels and I feel like this girl had the opposite of that energy you yeah. know what I mean and someone was like actually we're too cool here at fucking Air Postal for this <laughs> yes or whatever no it sucks know? when someone like just like kind of. Just Dampens make someone feel bad about the way they are. Like yes. the thing that they, because that's just who she is, is someone who connects with people. And because that manager is so either jealous of that energy mm-hmm. that she has and how good and how this girl might like eclipse her uh, or eclipse him, whoever it was. I think it's that kind of like stop doing that a lot of times in space in uh, I can't do it. So you can't. And it makes me feel bad that I can't do it. And it's nice to know. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try to make more eye contact and look for those um, employees who are looking to connect and make their job about more than just folding things and like straightening racks because, yeah, it's nice to have – it's so nice when you connect with humans and like have a real moment with a stranger, um, whether it be an Uber or whatever. But, um, yeah, that was good to hear. It's a good perspective to hear. Thank you so much for that. I also right, love – Oh, sorry. I just love – Wait, when, what, like, what do you love? No, like if – there's definitely times where like salespeople are just trying to sell you shit, but then there's other times where it's like they are actually being genuine and stuff, and then they try to sell you shit. It's fine like to go Buck for Mason. the sale. You go there and everybody knows your name. Buck Mason. I went in there in Austin. I didn't buy anything. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't fashionable. No, it wasn't crazy. How good does it feel to not buy something? Oh, my God. I remember you told me that. You were like, and I didn't buy anything. I felt great. I always fill up my carts, and then I just like click out of the window, and I'm like, Ah, I just saved hundreds of dollars. Dude, I had a sweater in my life. I had a sweater ready to go, but it was 90 degrees in fucking Austin. So I didn't buy it. All right. I got to go because I got to go do a podcast with Dr. Phil. I'm Dr. very Phil. excited and nervous. Uh, yeah. How's that working for you? Okay, guys. Um, thank you so much for listening this week. We will be back next week. See you this weekend in Florida, New Orleans and Nashville. And uh, we love you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for all your fan thraxes. We'll see you next week. Don't be cut. And Jack. Jack. In the Jack. Uh, wait, what are those things that like j- you throw jacks? Like yeah, jacks. 
Oh, okay. Jax. 